Number 36, a car moves along an x-axis through a distance of 900 meters, starting at rest and ending at rest. Through the first quarter of that distance, its acceleration is 2.25 meters per square second. Through the rest of that distance, its acceleration is minus 0.75 meters per square second. What are letter A, its travel time through the 900 meters? Letter B, its maximum speed, and letter C, graph position, velocity, and acceleration versus time for the trip. So in the first part of the movement, let's call it part one, the first part of the movement, we have that, that the acceleration, let's call it A1, is equal to plus 2.25 meters per square second. And in the second part of the movement, let's call it A2, is equal to minus 0 0.75 meters per square uh, second. So we want to know in letter A the, the time, the, the traveling time. So our strategy is to calculate the time that it took to do the first part of the movement, the time for the second part of the movement, and then we just sum everything up. That is our strategy here. Since the acceleration is constant in, in each part of the movement, we can use three different equations. Let's remember those equations. They are x equals to x0 plus v0t plus a t squared over 2. We can also use v equals to v0 plus a t and v squared equals to v0 squared plus 2 times a delta x. So those are the three equations that we can use when the acceleration is constant. However, the acceleration is constant if we look at, at each part of the movement by itself, because if you look for the whole movement, the acceleration is not constant because we have A1 and, we, and A2, so the, the acceleration changes. So in the first part of the movement, we want to calculate the time for, for that part of the movement, and we will use this equation over here. That is x equals to x0 plus v0t plus a t squared over 2. We know that the, the car starts from rest, so v0 equals to 0, we can cross out this term over here. The initial position is also 0, right? So this goes away as well. We know that the final position is equals to a quarter of the distance, which is 900 over 4 meters. So this is x. And the acceleration, of course, is a1, which is equal to 2.25 meters per square second. So we need to isolate the acceleration over here and no, not the acceleration, sorry. We need to isolate the, the time over here and that's kind of it. So let's isolate t. t equals to the square root of 2 times x over a. And this is equals to the square root of 2 times 900 over 4 divided by 2.25 and if you do this calculation over here you would find let's see would find roughly 14.14 seconds so this is the time for the first part of the movement for the second part of the movement we could 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 use this equation as well however this v0 is not zero for the second part of the movement, so we would have to solve a second degree equation, which is harder than if it's just a first degree equation. So we will not use this equation, we will use this equation over here, the second equation, v equals to v0 plus a t, where v0 is the final velocity of the first part of the movement, the final v is zero since it, it's it's the final at the final position of the movement. It's it's at rest as well. The acceleration is a two, and t is what what we want to know. So we need to find v zero over here, which is also the answer for letter b. So that's kind of easy. So let's go back to the first part of the movement. We know that v equals to v zero plus a t and in the first part of the movement the initial velocity is zero the acceleration is 2.25 and the t we just calculated over here which is 14.14 14 
and this is equal to roughly 31.8 uh, 31.8 meters per second so now we know this v0 over here which is the final velocity of the first part of the movement and we want to know t so we will isolate t so t equals to v minus v0 over a let's remember that v0 is equal to 31.8 meters per second and the final velocity is zero. So T2 is equal to zero minus 31.8 over minus 0 0.75. And this is equal to 42.43, 43 seconds. So this is the time for the second part of the movement. So if you wanna know the whole time, we can just sum T1 plus T2, which is equal to 56.6 seconds. So this is the answer of letter A. For letter B, the problem problems ask us uh, the maximum speed. So we can see that the, the speed is increasing only in the first part of the movement and it reaches a, a maximum velocity, a maximum speed, and then it decreases to zero. So the maximum speed is this speed over here, because after the first part of the movement, the speed starts decreasing. So this value would decrease. So this is the maximum value that we can find. So the answer for letter B is 31.8 meters per second. So this is the answer of letter B. Letter C, graph position, velocity, and acceleration. So let's first draw the graph for the position in function of time. So let's say time is in seconds. Do not forget the unity, the position in meters. So we have two different movements here, right? So let's divide them. So the division happens at the, the T1 which is t1 it is this value over here so we have that the first movement stops at 14.14 and the second movement stops at 56.6 which is the final time over here so in the first part of the movement we let's say this is 900 and this is let's divide it by four this is two, two, this is 900 over 4. So the first part of the movement stops here. And the second part of the movement stops over here. And we know that since we have acceleration, that the, the, the shape of the graph, it's a second degree equation. So it should be something like this in the first part, since it is accelerating. And in the second part, it should be something like this. Right? So this is the, the graph, like a really fast drawing for the graph of the position versus time. So the velocity versus time now. So T is in seconds. The velocity, velocity V, it's uh, in meters per second. Again, we have to divide it. So this is the first part of the movement over here, 14.14. .14. This is the second part of the movement, 56.6. .6. However, the, the velocity is a first degree equation, so it should be a straight line. And if the first part of the movement, the final velocity is 31.8. 31.8 so the first part of the movement ends here and we have a straight line so it should be something like this it's a straight line right i cannot draw it perfectly but it should be a straight line and the second part the velocity goes to zero so it should be a straight line as well to zero so this is you can draw it using a ruler at your home it should be easier for you 
So we just need to draw the acceleration versus time now. And that's the easiest graph that we will draw. So this is time over here in seconds. And this is the acceleration in meters per square second. Again, we have to divide the graph in two different parts. This is the first part over here, 14.14. And this is 56.6. .6. And we need the, the negative part of the graph, right? Let's not forget it. Let me... Okay. So we need the negative part of the graph. Since the acceleration is constant at 2.25, it's constant, it's a horizontal line. And for the second part of the movement, it is minus 0 0.75. So it goes like this. And that's it. That's the answer of letter C.